Hello, John here with another video. And in this vid uh, tutorial, we're going to be talking about the stack and its uh, instruction set. Now, a stack is do as uh, is derived of uh, a stack of uh, data structures used to store values and retrieve them in the reverse order. And this is known as LIFO, which is, in other words, for last in, first out. Now, CPUs use the stack to store the information for like GoSub, so it stores away the address that what that called the GoSub. So when it gets to when it uh, executes the return, it goes back to the stack to find the address where it came from, and so it can set the program counter to that um, value. Stacks. Uh, use two op use two types of operations. Um, you can push a value to the stack, and you can also pop a value from the stack. So this allows you to store information and retrieve and remove information from uh, a stack. Now the 6502 stack has hardware capabilities because the 6502 uses the page uh, one to store all its stack information so there's 250, uh, 255 bytes in that page and it then uses the hardware pointer within its CPU called the stack pointer to, sh to, to show the boundary between used data and unused data and the way that, uh, the wor the way that works is that it will actually show the point the last um, stack element is. So if the stack pointer says F6, that is where they, the current top of the stack is. And this, info, and, and this text was got from the nesdev.com wiki site. There are two ways to implement a stack. Um, there is a descend, descending stack, which is where you start at the top of the page, so you start at byte FF and then you work downward so if you add to the stack it then it goes FE add another one FD FC FB and so on and there's uh, and there's an other type of stack which is the ascending stack which starts at byte 0 and then goes to byte 1 byte 2 byte 3 byte 4 when you are add now the descending stack is used by the 6502, the Z80, the ARM processor and, and some others. But to try and visualize a stack, just imagine that you've got a, a table and you're stacking plates one on top of each other. So as you're adding the plate onto the other plates, the, the stack gets taller and taller and taller. But the problem is you cannot get one of the plates that are in the middle of the stack because if you physically pulled it, it would all topple over. And so to get to one of the middle plates, you have to take the plates off the top until you get to that one. All right? And so trying to pictureize this, it's, it's just like this. So you start off with one item on the stack and you add another item. So you end up with a stack of two. If you add another, push another item, you end up with three, and so forth up to six. And then to get to this item down here, number one, you have to pop six times to get to that one item. Now, admittedly, if you want, if you wanted to get to item one, and and then you lose five bits of information because you've got to find somewhere else to store this information to get to this point. So there is another feature that that is in stack terminologies where you can do a a peek and it allows you to peek at values inside the stack but the 6502 does not contain instructions to allow you to do that. You have to write that routine yourself in machine language to be able to do that. Now it's not difficult but it's just a uh, a caveat to the, to, to this particular operation. Now the, the process instructions for stack operations. So the two push to the stacks are push the accumulator to the stack and so that 
basically takes the contents of the accumulator and then copies them onto the stack. So it inserts the contents onto the stack. It doesn't change the accumulator contents. The accumulator contents stay the same. It just pushes the value to the stack. And PHP, this pushes the process status onto the stack. So the process status is the negative flag, the zero flag, the carry flag, decimal flag and overflow and it pushes that status onto the stack and the reason for that is because you can't directly access the process register you can't say load the accumulator with the process register and so the way to get the process register into the accumulator is you push it onto the stack and then pull it into the accumulator so the two pull um, instructions are to pull the top item from the stack into the accumulator. So what it does, it takes the top item of the stack and pushes it into the accumulator and increases the number of elements available in the stack so it effectively removes it from the stack. And same with the process status. You can pull the process status from the stack back into the process status. So you could store away the process status and then pull it back when you wanted it. There are two other uh, commands, and this is TSX and TX, TSX and TXS. God, they're difficult to say when you get. And what that does, it allows you to store the pros, the, the stack pointer into the X register, or set the stack pointer from the X register, and only the X register can do this. There is no other register that can do this. So this allows you. To, this can allow you to manipulate the stack. So if there's, if if there's any, if you wanted to uh, allocate stack resources to a program, you could set the stack pointer to a point. So it, for example, if you wanted to allocate 10 bytes of the stack to your program, you could then take transfer the stack pointer into X add 10 to it and then transfer the x value back into the stack pointer which would then allocate 10 bytes of the stack to that program. So some simple in, in examples so this is a, uh, an example on how to store three values onto the stack um, <clears throat> to be used later on so first thing we do is we initialize the stack pointer by saying it's 255 and then transfer in the x value onto the stack pointer so that's effectively saying that the stack is empty then we're going to load the accumulator with EO and then push it onto the, st the, the stack and then we're going to load Y with BB and push that onto the stack but because we can't push the Y register onto the stack we have to transfer into the accumulator and then push it onto the stack and same with the X register, so we're transferring the X register to the accumulator and then pushing that onto the stack. Now, to get this information back, you have to do the reverse. So, first thing we do is pull the contents of the stack into the accumulator, and because the X register was the last thing we did, we transfer that into the X register. Then we pull the contents of the the next element of the stack into the accumulator and because we knew that that was the Y register we transfer that back into the Y register and the last thing we do is pull the last um, element off the stack and push it into the, uh, into the accumulator because that was the first thing we did in the previous example. So to show this in real life here's a, a routine that I've got in my tutorials routines which is the, the included uh, file that's in all my routines and this routine basically prints out the contents of the accumulator and the st stack uh, and the status register and the, and the, the state of the status register but because I cut because this routine is called many many times I want to save the state of the accumulator the X register and the Y register when it does it so the very first thing I do when I'm calling this routine is so this is just getting the, the status register and then storing it. So I push the status register onto the stack, I store my accumulator in the number I want to print, then I pull the stack point, the, the last stack item into the accumulator, which was the status register, and then store that in the status state. Then I push 
the accumulator onto the stack and then now push the accumulator again onto the stack transfer the X register into A push that onto the push that onto the stack transfer the Y register in the accumulator and push that onto the stack then I do my routine so I do some printing out I uh, load the status register I print the status written represent that uh, in text and then I print the binary version of the accumulator, hexadecimal version of the accumulator, and then decimal version of the accumulator. So when I've finished, I want to restore the states of the registers. So therefore I pull the accum accumulator from the stack, so if I just move up a little bit, which is corresponding to this one, and then I transfer it into the Y, because Y was transferred into the accumulator. So I'm doing the reverse of what I did before. So then I pull into the accumulator again, and then transfer that into the X register. Then I pull again the accumulator, but that goes into the accumulator, and then I pull the process status. And that's this one here, because I pulled the accumulator, which was the process status, stored it, and then pushed it back. Yeah. So I pulled it again and stored it back into the process data. So the process data is reverted back to the state it was when it went into that routine. And this allows you, this, using the, the stack allows you to maintain the integrity of your registers even though you've done quite a bit in your routine. So I'm hoping this has shed some light onto the, uh, the, the stack process in the 6502 because not many people use the stack and it can be a very powerful tool in temporary storage for your program so if you want to store your information in the program the stack is a good place to do that and especially when you're doing recursive routines where the routine goes in a loop and a loop and a loop you can use the stack to maintain the state of that routine because as you go into the routine seven times and then you must come out of that routine seven times you can use the stack to um, maintain the state of that routine so with that I will uh, leave you guys and I'll see you in the next video take care bye